Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use series and parallel rules for resistors in order to solve a circuit. And what I mean by solve a circuit, this is just a, another, a stereotypical circuit where we know the properties of the components, we know the uh, battery EMF, we know the resistance of the resistors, and we want to predict the current and the potential difference across each of these devices. So you can imagine putting meters into this uh, circuit, measuring the current, measuring the electric potential difference, and then we could uh, test to see if our predictions are correct. Okay, so uh, series and parallel rules are nice because you can simplify the circuit and turn this com somewhat complex network of resistors into the, uh, calculate the equivalent resistance and treat this as a single resistor circuit. So we're going to turn this battery and three resistors into a battery in a single resistor, which is much easier to solve. Okay, so the one important thing is to identify which circuit elements are series and parallel. And these resistors, resistor two and resistor three, are in parallel. They are connected at both ends. So I can connect a line from here to here. I can connect a wire from here to here. So they're connected on both sides. They are by definition in parallel. Okay, R1 and R2 are not in series, even though they're in a line, because there's a junction here. So don't, don't confuse geometry with what we mean by circuit series and circuit parallel. Okay, so R2 and R3 are in parallel, so we can calculate what we call the equivalent resistance. So um, we, uh, the equivalent resistance of 2 and 3, we just follow the rule for parallel, which is inverse the sum of the inverses. So it'll be 1 over 20 plus 1 over 30 raised to the minus 1, which is 12 ohms. Okay, So then I, what I would recommend you do when you're solving these circuits is not just do the math, redraw the circuit with and replace these with the equivalent resistance. So I'm going to just completely redraw the circuit. 9 volt battery is still the same as it was. R1 is still the same. And then instead of this group, I replace it with a single resistor with this resistance. Okay, and then this is still R1, and here's our battery. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, now that we've done the parallel rule, I can apply the series rule to this individual and this group. And I'm going to redraw the circuit. So R123, meaning the resistance of this group, will just be the sum. It'll be 24 plus 12 ohms, giving us 36 ohms. Okay, so that means that this group of three resistors behaves as if it is a single resistor with a resistance of 36 ohms. Okay, so let's draw the circuit again. Okay, so now I have a battery and a single resistor, and Let's solve that circuit. So I can use Ohm's law to calculate the current through this group. So the current through the group will just be the battery voltage divided by the resistance. Battery voltage is 9 volts. Resistance of the group is 36 ohms. So the current through the group will be a quarter of an ampere. Okay, so this is where a lot of sources will just quit. They'll say, oh, we've well, solved the circuit, calculated the equivalent resistance, and we're done. But really, we're not. We haven't completely solved this circuit. We've just said the group has a quarter of an amp. I don't know how much current each of these individuals has. I don't know the potential difference across each of these individuals. So what you do next is work your way back to the original circuit using the properties of series and parallel circuit elements. So what I can do uh, whoops, with this is I can take this current and apply it to each of these individuals. Because they are in series, they split the potential difference, so they don't each get the full 9 volts of the battery, but they do get the same current. So this, I'm just going to make the assertion. Okay, I1 is equal to a quarter of an amp because series, same current, and then I23, the current through this group, is also a quarter of an amp. So I can just simply make that as an assertion. And now what I can do is I can calculate the potential differences for each of them. 
The, um, so the nine volts gets split for the series circuit elements. Okay, so split the potential difference, same current. Okay, so to calculate the potential difference, just apply Ohm's law. So Ohm's law would be a quarter of an amp times its individual resistance. R1 is 24, and I get six volts. Okay, and then I can calculate directly the potential difference across two and three, quarter of an amp times their equivalent resistance, which is 12 ohms, and I get three volts. Okay, and that's what we mean by splitting the potential difference. Okay, nine volts across the group, R1 gets six volts, and R2, three gets three volts. Okay, so that's how you can check your work, see if they add up to, uh, to what the group is supposed to have. Okay, I'm not done. Uh, I'm done for, for one. I know it's current, it's potential difference, but I'm not for, for two and three. So I need to take this data, the voltage across the group, and apply it to the individuals. So parallel circuit elements have the same potential difference. So I can simply assert what the potential difference across two is. I assert that it's three volts, and I can also simply assert that the potential difference across three is also three volts. The group and the individuals have the same potential difference. What I have to calculate is how this current is split. So the group has a current of 0.25 amperes. I need to know how that gets divided amongst these individuals. So at this junction right here, the current's gonna, gonna split and I need to, to figure out who gets uh, what. Okay, so I can calculate current two using Ohm's law. So the potential difference divided by the resistance. So three over 20 and I get 0.15 amperes and then I can do the same thing for three its potential difference divide by its resistance and I get 0 0.10 amps okay and as expected these two numbers add up to the uh, to the current of the group so split current common potential difference okay so I'm basically done I've calculated the uh, here I've got the current and the potential difference for resistor one and then over here I've got the current and potential difference for uh, for resistors two and three. Okay, so when you're solving circuit um, parallel and series circuits, don't just quit once you solve the uh, circuit for the equivalent resistance. You typically need to work your way back to the original original circuit. That's an important part of uh, of a complete circuit analysis. Okay, well, thanks for watching.